Good morning and welcome to the Blue Earth County Board of Commissioners meeting of May 3rd, 2022. If you'd all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We have an agenda review. Well, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. Okay. Move to approve. Hans moves to approve. A second. Second. Second by Kip. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed carries. All right. First up is the community corrections. And John. Good morning, 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 John. One quick item uh, for you this morning. Um, I have for you. In the packet, uh, I have a memo, and also you'll find a resolution and a joint powers agreement uh, between Blue Earth County Community Corrections and the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Uh, so this is an, an agreement for the next five years, and it'll allow the Community Corrections Department to continue to use the tools and systems available from the BCA. So included in your packet is the memo. It's also a resolution in there as well, but then there are two uh, agreements in there. So one is the basic joint powers agreement between our department and the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, the BCA, um, to continue using uh, the Criminal Justice Data Communications Network. Um, it's where we obtain really a criminal uh, history checks where we obtain that information as a primary use of that information. And then there's also one specific to court services data which really does cover our uses and like I was saying uh, for our purposes of uh, obtaining information and, and primarily focused on like I said uh, investigative uh, information or background checks is really what we're using that for. So this agreement like I said would be for the next five years um, and I would just uh, respectfully request that the uh, commissioners approve that joint powers agreement between uh, my department community corrections and the BCA. I'll move approval. And moved by Kip. Second. Second by Vance. So both those actions are in the same resolution? Uh, they two will actions? be, yes. So it'll be the resolution and then the two uh, joint powers agreements okay. in that resolution. Everybody understands. So any further questions? Otherwise, then uh, all in Good favor point. say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. <coughs> We have the next, we got <clears throat> Morning, Craig. Morning, Craig. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, I only have one item today. Um, <clears throat> this is on the petition for improvement of Judicial Ditch 33. Judicial Ditch 33 resides in sections 22, 23, 26, 27 in McPherson Township. JD33 is a public drainage system established in 1918 with approximate watershed of 896 acres. On December 6, 2021, a drainage staff received a petition for improvements to JD33. On December 21st, 2021, the drainage authority appointed Chuck, engineer Chuck Brandle of IS, INS Group to prepare a preliminary survey for the improvement. The uh, preliminary survey report was filed with the Blue Earth Property and Environmental Resources Department on March 25th, 2022. Uh, we are requesting the approval of the attached findings and order setting the hearing for JD33 Improvement Preliminary Survey Report for June 21st, 2022 at 9 a.m. on the second floor board of commissioners room at the Blue Earth County Historic Courthouse 204 South 5th Street, Mankato, Minnesota. Brunder would move okay. approval. Okay. Brunder moves approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor of uh, the date setting? Um, and all say hi. aye. 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 Opposed carries. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Craig too. Thanks, Craig. Okay, next we have Ryan. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Ryan. I suppose you're going to take a little bit longer than last time. I'm hey. <laughs> <laughs> doing my best. I set a tough bar, though, for getting out of here quick. <laughs> yeah, especially I, with the list of stuff you got. <laughs> I do have a full slate here today. Yeah, so, you do. So bear with me. We got That's a, lot, a good thing. Believe it or not, we got a lot going on. No. 
uh, first action item is consideration of a resolution for uh, prioritization for bridge replacement projects. This is a list that was updated uh, generally annually. This includes re resolution for replacement of 30 bridges totaling $17,940,000. The bridges are eligible or we anticipate will soon be eligible for state or federal replacement funding. So with that said, um, this is also a pretty useful tool when we go visit our legislators and provide them with a copy of this so they can really see that here's our need for Blue Ridge mm -hmm. County specifically. It's so huge. I would recommend approval of the resolution included in the packet. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Vance, second by Kevin. How much did you say it was? $17,940,000. Okay. Uh, discussion, all those in then favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, curious. All right, my next action item is the uh, bid abstracts will make their way around is consideration of bids for state aid project 007598-29. This is on County Road 151 bridge replacement of existing bridge number 3773 over the Rice Creek. This is a really old, robust, concrete, very narrow bridge. So it took quite a while for this bridge to become eligible for replacement funding. Um, we received funding in late 2020 and had to make some tweaks and updates to the bridge plans to bring it to the current specifications as we've discussed previously. The engineer's estimate for the project was $653,137. The apparent low bidder was M&K Bridge Construction with a total bid of $701,731.77 which was 7.44% over our estimate. The other three bidder structural specialties, Minowa Construction and Dunnick Incorporated, range from 24 to 48.7% over our engineer's estimate. Uh, M&K is currently working for us. They have the County Road, uh, County State Highway 40 bridge, and um, we anticipate the way we laid these projects out is that they'll be able to work in stages on 40 and then jump to this one on 151 and just kind of follow suit with the same operation. They've worked for us several times in the past. They're out of Walnut Grove, Minnesota. A uh, good small local contractor. We've been working with them, so I would recommend a word to M&K Bridge Construction. So moved. And moved by Kevin. Second. Second by Vance. Uh, any further questions? And they're all going to be a bunch going to be higher. Yeah. I get better news later. Yeah, it's just the, 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 the you can go through the go through it relatively quickly, and there's only like four or five items that they're way high on. Mobilization was really alarming to me. Yep. I mean, we were estimating 20, and one of them was at 180. Mobilization is uh, one of those items where contractors will stick a lot of uncertainty and or risk and or um, maybe items that they're not sure where to how to hedge it into sure. other bid items. Just different seeing all the different numbers yeah. well it seems like they're already doing work for us um uh, m and k probably doesn't have to mobilize it they don't have to do the. they've still got to send their low boy from walnut grove to blue county to pick up whatever piece of equipment and move it on to yeah, the next job true. and send it back so it's it's still a cost and i think there's a lot of them that have a a lot of uncertainty with fuel prices obviously mm -hmm. where they are right now. Yeah. i mean I just filled up my truck with diesel this morning and it was over $150, so I, I can only imagine a, a big rig. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any further questions? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. Okay. We have Action item number three is consideration of a state of Minnesota local bridge replacement program grant agreement. This is for the same project stated, Project 0075-9829, County Road 151 for the bridge replacement. It includes $419,184 from the motor vehicle lease sales tax, which covers 100% of the eligible bridge replacement cost because this is on a county road. Remember, if it was on a county state aid highway, we would only get 50% of the bridge eligible cost. Uh, this will require $282,547.77 of local funds from, we currently plan on using local option sales tax proceeds to cover the roadway and approach grading costs. 
with that being said, I would recommend approval of the grant agreement. So moved. Okay. Moved by Kevin. Second. Kip. Kip. Second. Second. By Kip, I meant. Okay. Well, <coughs> any other questions? All those in favor, then bid say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. <coughs> All right. Thank you. And we'll move on. I'll pass on the next bid abstract. This is for County State 8 Highway 11. This is the stretch uh, from Casa 20 to Minnesota Highway 68. Stated project number 0076110112. There was an engineer's estimate of $6,218,405.24. The apparent low bidder was R&E Enterprises of Mankato at $5,939,674.68 or 4.48% under the engineer's estimate. <coughs> the second highest contractor was Mathewitz Construction at 4.5% over the estimate, followed by Minnesota Paving Materials at 5.3% over. So those two are fairly tight to each other. And Central Specialties was highest at 18.39% over the engineer's estimate. <coughs> Uh, with respect to R&E, as the apparent low bidder, um, you know, they, there is a 9% difference between them and the next lowest bidder. R&E does have limited experience with this type of project. They're looking to expand their operational capabilities and the scope of work that they can do. They have worked for us successfully in the past as a subcontractor and a gravel hauler contracts for our maintenance operations. They've also performed gravel hauling, placement, and tolerancing on most of the on the most recent Highway 14 project. In addition to that, they had also done a Highway Safety Improvement Program project for the county. Um, so they're a local contractor that has vested interest in a successful project. We did re have subsequent conversations with them regarding their capability to properly perform the scope of the work on this project. They did provide us with a summary of their equipment that they intend to provide to the site as well as the staff, um, a little bit of their experience. Um, it, it, it appears to be adequate, um, so this will probably be a little bit of a learning experience for them, but we, we anticipate having good staff out there to help help guide and make sure things go smoothly as possible. Um, with that being said, it is also, you know, in my mind, beneficial to have a another local contractor that can bid on these kinds of bread and butter projects that we do routinely, so if they can figure out how to do these projects effectively and we can have somebody right out of town able to pursue them, that's a good thing. So with that, I would say um, we certainly will recommend approval to R&E Enterprises. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Kevin second in advance for R&E Enterprises. Bid. Questions? <coughs> Mr. Any? Chair. Oh, Kip. Kip. <coughs> Do we have a staff person out there full-time or part-time? Full-time. Full-time. Yep. From, our, know, from our department. The from our department. From that out. Works, correct. Okay. It's, it's obviously de dependent on what the operations are. If they're out there drying dirt and we've got something else going right. on. But yeah, well, in I'm general, yeah, any of the critical operations were out there at yes, the same hours the contractors are. Okay. Yep. Thank you. This will be, we're hoping this is the last year where we're spread thin because of the turn back project. Oh, okay. The last leg of that, you know, that's, uh, you add a, whether we do $10 million worth or $8 million worth of work on the turn back project this year, that's a big project to wrap up that mm -hmm. takes one to two staff. So we've got a, this is another, uh, big, big year for our staff, so we're hoping to get back to more of a normal with our our local levy money, our county stated highway, and local option sales tax will keep us more than busy, but uh, not not excessively to the point where we have been the last yeah. four or five years. We'll wait a couple more years before we do another turn back. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> I've, I've been approached. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Carries. All right. The last bid I'm going to pass around is for County Stated Highway 12. This is the stretch from Cassaw. Statement kind of goofy. This is for the stretch from Cassaw 26 that goes east to Madison Lake, up to the North County line at County Stated Highway Number Two. This project is stated project number 0076120023. Engineer's estimate was $2,607,716.40. And Minnesota Paving and Materials was the apparent low bidder at $2,536,100.01, uh, which ended up being 
2.75% under the engineer's estimate. The next bid was Mathwood's Construction Company, which was 19.8% over the engineer's estimate, and Wendell Lorenz Construction at 21.66% over the estimate. So good numbers from MPM. You know, obviously we did try to adjust our prices after we got our overlay bids back, and we, we brought our engineer's estimate up a little bit to try to compensate, which is why you're seeing these being right in the ballpark um, from what we had thought they were going to be in February or March. Obviously, we've encountered a dramatically different bidding environment. Uh, but the numbers from MPM are certainly good, and we're excited to get this project underway. With that, I would recommend award to Minnesota Paving Materials. We'll do approve. Second. Second. <coughs> and dance, second. Yep. yep. And paving and materials. Um, any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Action item number six is consideration of the omnibus assignment and assumption agreement or bill of sale slash lease termination for the rapid end. This agreement is for the lease termination and the transfer of owner's hydroelectric production components, uh, which would transfer the ownership from Eagle Creek Renewable Energy slash rapid end hydro over to Blue Earth County. Obviously, that's an important piece if we do eventually decide to bring the dam back online for electrical generation. We've reviewed these documents during the April County Board work session, and I, I think uh, Commissioners Strunberg and Papp have also seen them previously, as we've discussed during our meetings with Eagle Creek. Um, uh, Bob has also been on those calls and reviewed the documents as well. And we did have a conversation yesterday with Eagle Creek Renewable Energy, providing updates on where the county's at. And we did agree that uh, May 14th, Termin effective termination date would, if the county board approves this document would be ideal. That would give the county time to get the um, current Eagle Creek employee on as a temporary employee mm -hmm. through the county so that they can continue their routine monitoring activities that are required. So with that, I would recommend approval of this document with a May 14th effective date. So moved. And moved by Kevin. Second. Second by Kip. Okay, May 14th. Um, any further discussion? I, it's much time as we've been spending on this for the last two years. You know, that it's it's good to see it's finally coming around and things are things are happening. Right. We still have a lot of big decisions to make on this, but correct. Uh, this is just a start. Yes, understatement. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, carries. All right. Um, Action item number seven is consideration of the transition services agreement for Rapid and Dam. This is agreement is to allow Eagle Creek Renewable Energy uh, the opportunity, to, or the yeah, Blue Earth County have the opportunity for Eagle Creek to provide us with technical assistance, and that includes things like uh, opening and closing the tainer gates, things of that nature, which we actually need to do within the next week or so to get the buoys out upstream of the dam. So some of those things we're not well versed with, we haven't done in the past, so. They'll continue to do that through the end of this year, um, and then hopefully by then we've got a decision made on the fate of the dam and determine appropriate actions as necessary. Um, with that being said, we would also propose the May 14th effective date for this agreement. Move to approve. Move by advance. Second. Second by Kip. Any questions? All those in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed, curious. All right, thank you. Action item number eight, consideration of a cooperative construction agreement for state aid projects 007610-024 and 007672-004. This is for county state aid highway number 10 and 72 in the city of Vernon Center. The city is advertising for these projects for a May 20th bid opening and the anticipated cons county construction costs and overhead costs for City engineering staff, inspection, contract administration, prorated our project is uh, $1,839,655 for both County State Highway 10 and 72, and the anticipated city costs are $278,194. Uh, this is a project has been years in the making for reconstruction of both roads. It sounds like CASA 10 will be performed this year, and 72 will be followed subsequently mm -hmm. in 2023 because of 
concerns about business access and things of that nature and this is obviously part of a much wider city reconstruction project so with that uh, the agreement will have the city consultant engineers acting as the lead agent the city acting as the lead agency through their consultant engineers at SEH they'll be doing the contract administration and, and project inspections so I would recommend approval of this agreement so move Mm -hmm. Second. Kevin, second by Kevin. Other questions for the contract? Um, okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just some informational item updates on projects that we have going. The Casa 40 Bridge replacement project, where the road was closed yesterday, construction is beginning today. On the County Road 169 Bridge replacement project, both abutments have been poured. And beams should be set late this week or early next week, so they're already making pretty good progress on those on the County Road 169 bridge. And, and obviously, we laid out those bridges subsequently so that uh, our staff would be able to kind of hop from one project to another in some of those more critical stages. The 2022 bituminous overlays work will begin Monday, May 9th. It will begin on Casa 27, and then move on to County Road, uh, the County State of Highway 48. That's the segment south of. Madison Lake, north of Highway 14. And then on to County State at Highway 5. Minnesota Paving Materials is gonna pull out for a couple of weeks to do another critical timeline project. And then the return, return to resume the remaining roadways. Seven in Mapleton, the crews began sidewalk work last week with a shoulder closure. The full road was closed yesterday for full reconstruction to begin. What's the timeline on that one again, Ryan? Uh, the goal is to have that open mid-August prior oh, to school. So fall, school and fall yeah. harvest. And we've had we've, we've had meetings with the, the city, the county, the school district, and their contractors, their construction managers, because obviously we've got some challenge associated with that project with respect to making sure they've got a lot of work to do yet this year on the school site. School, yeah. And Can all three of its access points come off of either County State at Highway 7 or Barker Street. Oh. <laughs> Both of those roads are going to be under construction this year as well. Uh, but I think we've got a pretty good plan. we got everybody in the room. We've got weekly meetings set up to coordinate. WW has a good approach to the project where they're going to be build seven in halves so that they can build the south half first without impacting the school uh, and then do a flop. And they even think when that happens, then ideally we can bring Barker in from the other direction. So they've got okay. a good approach with it. We're using the the school driveway as kind of the, the the fulcrum point or the balance point so that once they move to the north half then obviously there's a little detour where traffic would have to come down highway 22 to our casa 29 back up seven but there's a way in so it, it seems like it knock on wood should should okay. work out fairly well we've already discussed 10 and 72 in vernon center with the bid letting on may 20th 11 and 12 obviously have just been awarded and will be ready to go once contracts are approved. Uh, CASA 16 from the Lesua River to County Stated Highway 90. Detailed design is progressing. I'd say we're at about 30% with the profile and alignments being set. This is a really challenging segment of road due to the proximity of some of the homes um, and the steep slopes. Not only is the road steep, but then you've got steep adjacent slopes, which makes it very difficult to tie things in. We will have to probably try to fit some urban sections in some of those areas so that we can limit the the need to cut in slopes ditch bottoms and back slopes which really would encroach on those homes pretty severely so we're working through that process and that's a practice we've done on several other roads 13 from 169 to Kassab 1 the design alignment profiles have been set we've met with the higher impact landowners and had I think really good meetings with them actually um, gotten feedback on their their preference for the alternatives that we were able to present to them so we're incorporating that into our design and it's moving forward on both the road as well as the big bridge and the box culvert over the county ditch on county state highway 26 from 57 to minnesota highway 22 the design is also progressing we need to meet with high impact landowners such as the trailer park very soon we are mailing out today open house notifications for a may 24th public open house meeting from 4 to 6 p.m. That'll be held at the Public Works Department. And you should all be receiving a copy of that notification for that meeting. So uh, with that, that does conclude my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Anybody have any further questions for Ryan? Good report. Good report. Good report. Good report. Mm -hmm.
tell your staff to be safe out there this season. Oh, well, thank you, and yeah. they wanted me to thank you for the donuts last week as well. So, and thank you for inviting us to the safety meeting. Absolutely. Yep. What a nice visit. It was. All right. Have a good rest of your day. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. <coughs> All right, then we have Patrick, <coughs> County Attorney. Morning, Pat. Yeah, morning, morning, Pat. Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Uh, if there's any questions on any of in the information contained in the report, please let me know. Things have been a little bit busier than normal. We're still seeing the trend of uh, some places, most places nationwide, are seeing an increase in in violent crimes and decrease in petty crimes. Um, as of last week, we now have 10 open homicide cases in our office. So those can be very taxing and time consuming, but we continue to move forward. So any questions, concerns, or comments, please let me know. Mr. Chair. Yep. Pat, you and I, talked a little bit about this the other day but could you just tell the rest of us you know how much time and energy goes into those homicide cases and kind of the layout of the staff you have assigned to it and how you stay involved with it you know it's it's interesting I should I should bring this sometime um, and this from is from a case a, a few years ago first of all I'll just say that typically they say that the average homicide case will take two attorneys 200 hours each and that's not including any any staff time, any victim witness coordination, and all that fun stuff. But I can tell you, just off the top of my head, I, I went back and looked at a case from a few years ago, and there were over 23 law enforcement officers involved. There were over uh, el there were 11 BCA forensic scientists that were involved. There was a forensic psychiatrist, a forensic psychologist. There were over 2,700 pages of documents that came to me to review. That did not include any of the technology dumps from computers, cell phones, uh, things of that nature. There were eight search warrants executed. There were over 70, there were 70 names that were associated with the investigation and somebody else had to follow up on each and every one of those names and there were over 200 businesses that were listed that someone had to follow up on. So, and that one wasn't as involved as, as others that I've had in the past, but that just kind of gives you a little bit of a snapshot of what goes into some of these cases. Um, right now, with the file that's currently being investigating, uh, investigated at this point in time, I know that there's been over a dozen, dozen officers, law enforcement officers involved and whatnot, so um, it just continues to, to be time consuming, and, and, uh, but we'll get through it. This is, you know, I, I, I had three open ones that I took on myself at one point in time early in my career. It's not <coughs> fun, but you managed to get through it. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Thank you, Pat. Thanks I just thought it was question. important that that kind of stuff gets talked about. We don't, unfortunately, have to talk about homicide cases, but it is what we have here in the county, and good to know how you're dealing with it, so thanks. Well, we actually had to, now that you said that, um, because I wanted an aerial, aerial view of the of the crime scene, so they had to take one of the uh, officers out of the school resource officers to come out and fly the drone. So, okay. this last week. How many Thank cases you. are active? Ten. Ten murder cases. Ten. Ten. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, and maybe this isn't a question for you, uh, um, more of the sheriff's department, but just kind of a rough. Help me understand how much time, and maybe Commissioner Strunberg can be helpful as well. How much time in a normal week or month or whatever percentage of a time for a law enforcement officer is in court, preparing for court, that's that's really involved in that, not not in the office doing mm -hmm. other things. Just and I'm sure it's different for different types of officers. It, it, it really is. It's it's much different. Um, you know, if uh, like for example, I know Deputy Arkell, he's the uh, grant DWI enforcement officer. He ends up spending quite a bit of time compared to other officers in court. You know, there's one day a month that they have the implied consent block, and if, if Chris is involved in any of those cases, then he's in, in court at least once a month based upon that, but then on the criminal side of the house, he'll come in. There are some officers that rarely go to court. Um, the, the investigators, it just depends on the type of case. You know, um, Justin Lindmeyer will be doing more of the child protection cases moving forward so 
chances are that he'll end up in court with more than the average person just because of the nature of those cases. But I would say that that on a on a monthly basis, you know, I, I would say Chris Arkell probably spends at least ten hours a month preparing for in court, whereas the average deputy or average officer might spend a couple, and then you get into some of the investigative positions, and it depends on the nature of the cases. We're fortunate we have the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension that has four agents at the Justice Center. Hopefully that things will get through the Justice or the, through the legislature this year, and they'll build a new building next to the Justice Center, and I believe they plan on employing uh, between the forensic services and basic agents and different various types of agents that they have, there will be over 50 people in that building. Mm. So and that, this just gives you, a, that's a good question, Kevin. I appreciate you asking that because it is something that uh, takes quite a bit of time or, and takes away from, you know, and, and Commissioner Sternberg, you could talk to just what it takes, how many calls for service you might average in a day and how much time you spend on paperwork. No computer work. I mean, that's something I think we don't, because we don't see it, um, we kind of forget that right. they don't have 100% of their day available to right. be uh, to do the rest of their job. TV shows don't help either. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, when when you look at just just the smaller cases, the DWIs and stuff. I mean, uh, you take away the time that you're you're uh, one on one with the person that you're arresting. You know, and that, that's going to take probably an hour, hour and a half. You have two hours of paperwork after that just for a DWI case, you know. And for uh, officers that are really uh, look look and want, want to make sure they get the drunks off the road, the ones that do write a lot of DWIs, they spend a lot of time in paperwork. We probably get some overtime hours just because... Uh, they can't get it done before the end of their shift. Sure. Mm -hmm. But, and then I, I mean, I've only handled uh, and worked with a couple uh, homicides when, in my career. And I, I know the amount of time that I spent, I was a, a, a small player in the investigation part, but I can only imagine the, the hours upon hours of just paperwork and investigations that go before yeah. the court hearing comes. It's amazing. There's been a couple of times, Commissioner Pfaff did in the past, that uh, we've received some chuckles because when the uh, state puts out an eight-page DWI made easy guide, <laughs> 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 so, and literally, I think it's, it's eight pages. So. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you, Nat, for that. Uh, okay. Can we go on to administration? Bob. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, first item is the County Board Minutes for April 19th. A motion. I move approval. Kip, move Second. Approval. Second by Vance. Questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed <coughs> carries. Next are the bills for the two weeks indicated. Move the bills. Seconds. Move the bills. Ke Kevin seconds. Uh, no questions. And uh, all those in favor of the Motion say aye. 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 Opposed carries. All right. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number seven in your packet is the Human Resources Department agenda. We do have one action item for the board's consideration today, and that is authorization for the chair and the county administrator to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Law Enforcement Labor Services on, uh, Sheriff's Non-Essential Unit. This is our 911 dispatchers. This is a memorandum of understanding similar to what we did with the uh, correctional officers regarding uh, lead worker pay and shift differential. Uh, this would change their existing uh, lead worker pay, which is currently at $4 uh, per hour when they're serving as a lead worker, uh, to $5 an hour effective May 8th, and then uh, increase it to $5.50 an hour uh, effective January 1st of 23. The change to the shift differential, um, Currently, that is at 60 cents an hour, would increase it to 75 cents uh, effective uh, May 8th, and then to 95 cents effective January 1st of 23. 
Are we move to approve? Advance moves to approve. Second. Second. Is it, is it Kip? Yep. Kip. Uh, okay. Uh, second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, Thank you. Okay. Under informational items, then, we have uh, filled a correctional officer position in the jail. We also have filled a probation officer in our community corrections department. Uh, also, another part time correctional officer in the jail. Uh, we did have a resignation of a part time correctional officer, though, so we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. We also had a resignation of a property and environmental resources specialist and <clears throat> um, we've initiated recruitment to fill that position. Then we had a resignation of an appraiser in our property and environmental resources department. So we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. We also had a resignation of a lieutenant uh, effective June 26. So we've initiated recruitment to fill that lieutenant spot in the sheriff's department. Uh, then we had a promotion um, of a tax taxation and records supervisor to assistant property and environmental resources director. And so we've initiated recruitment to backfill that taxation and records supervisor position. Then we had two promotions of child support enforcement specialist to uh, um, child support officers. So those uh, internal promotions um, have led to the need to recruit uh, two child support enforcement specialists. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have on any of those items. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I don't. Uh, if not, then item number eight in your packet is a um, real estate purchase agreement resolution. Uh, this is a resolution delegating authority to the county administrator to negotiate and execute a real, est real estate purchase agreement for the purchase of land to be used for the construction of a new public works facility. Uh, the county, as you know, has been exploring uh, for over a year land options to build a replacement public works maintenance facility given the limitations and condition of the current facility on Map Drive here in Mankato. As uh, staff have explored options, we have considered land costs along with other development costs such as grading, high-speed internet access, and proximity to sitter, city wa uh, sewer and water. In addition, operational considerations have been factored into the site selection process especially access to snow plow routes and other road maintenance activities. As a result of these co considerations, a 76.31 acre parcel at the corner, uh, the southeast corner of Stoltzman Road and 200 Street in Mankato Township has been identified as a suitable location for the new public works facility. Uh, I can tell you that staff have reached a verbal tentative agreement with the owner of the property on the price of the land. We are currently working through other provisions of the purchase agreement with the assistance of the county attorney's office. So today I'm seeking board approval of the resolution so that when all provisions of the purchase agreement are resolved, the purchase agreement can be executed, which will allow work to progress with the intent of starting construction about this time next year. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have regarding the resolution. I move approval. I move by Kip. Second. Second. Kip by Vance. Um, hmm. Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Kip. We've had <coughs> several discussions about this in work sessions and throughout this process as we've been moving through it, uh, I'm very comfortable with taking this next step and just trying to secure something. Uh, I understand that the purchase agreement will have all of our concerns outlined with the annexation, change of the land use and all that. So um, we have a lot of work to do yet and I think this is just the appropriate next step. So uh, I'm very supportive of moving forward with this and trying to get something going. Um, and you mentioned uh, fiber, is it, uh, the county has a fiber fiber loop 
Is Correct. this close to that fiber loop or is it? Is um, it's a ways away. Uh, the loop actually runs down Stoltzman to Stadium Hill and then heads east from there. So we'd have to bring it up uh, Stoltzman out to this location. So uh, we have worked with our IT department to identify you know, what that would take and the cost associated with that. So that is one of the factors that uh, we're looking at. We like the idea of the loop because it gives us redundancy. Uh, whether we do another loop out to this location or we look at a backup maybe through a uh, tower system, there's st uh, still discussions that are ongoing. Thank you. Okay, that's a good question. Thank you. Any other questions? So it's moving forward. Um, all right. Hearing none, um, what's it going to vote on? Yep, we've got a motion to go second. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number nine in your packet <coughs> are the quarterly donations for the first quarter of this year. You'll see on the first page that there have been a number of donations to the library, including some large donations for the summer learning program and so we certainly appreciate uh, the support we're receiving there for that program. A couple other smaller donations to the Sheriff's Department and to uh, veterans regarding the van. The second page gets into in-kind or product uh, types of donations. Most of those are to uh, the library. And then on the, the third page are um, identified volunteers that have contributed to the library and so bring this forward for the board's acceptance here today. So moved. It's been moved by Kevin. Second. Second by Vance to approve the donations here. Uh, all those in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Curious. Great. Yeah. Well concluded there then. All right. uh, at this point then I guess we have mission reports. Right? And Who's going to be the lucky one? Let's see. Let me start with Kevin. All right. Uh, since our uh, April last April board meeting, um, certainly I've been involved in, in all the donut um, donut activities. <laughs> Appreciate uh, that and chance to see our um, our different uh, employees doing with that. We've been active with the Lesueur Policy Committee uh, meeting. Um, on April 22nd, um, also involved with the uh, um, Monday, April 25th, uh, was uh, the PACE committee. That's part of the uh, Rural Minnesota Energy Board. As we look at that, we had an advisory committee meeting with uh, the uh, True Transportation. <coughs> Did that over Zoom. Um, conversations primarily have been around some odor concerns and, and, and road concerns and MFS in that. I've got, uh, I forgot now, Jesse, it was 400 and some days, but I finally got my first pocket gopher call <laughs> from a young gentleman that wanted to know what to do with the pocket gopher. So looking forward with that. And then um, seeing uh, um, some of the rain and stuff last couple days, a few calls on, on um, ditch and, and water uh, water issues things like that and been involved in the rapid and uh, dam activities um, that uh, concludes my report mr chair okay, thanks kevin uh, kip uh, after our last board meeting yes the, the appreciation with the staff was very uh, nice to get out and talk with some of the staffs i didn't make all of them but i got to most of them and then we had the Rapidan Open House, which I was impressed with the turnout we had there. Uh, the only complaint that I got from a couple people is it was too loud in there and they yeah. couldn't really communicate. But, you know, that's just one of those things we deal with. And we'll be having more of them. Uh, I did get some feedback from some people that uh, I, I didn't have my name tag on. And one person came up to me and said, I don't know why we're even here. They've already got this all decided and they're not going to know what they're, you know, they already know what they're going to do. They're just checking the boxes here. And, I introduced myself and I assured him that we have not made our decision yet and we have a lot of discussion to deal with this and uh, that it would be a, a long 
relatively long time before any solid decision is made because there's a lot of stuff to look at here. So, but visit with a lot of uh, people and had a, I thought it was a good turnout. The safety meeting lunch uh, was uh, and it was fun to talk with some of the staff out there and get out in the shop and talk to the guys. And then I had several things with my SECB committee meetings. I got put on the finance committee meeting also, so I'm kind of involved in that. And several calls on road, gravel roads issues, drainage issues, of course. Uh, and that is my report, Mr. Chair. Hey, thanks, Kip. Vance. Well, a lot of the same stuff that uh, Kip and Kevin have gone over. The Rapid and Dam open house was very good. Uh, and we are looking forward to more more people talking to us and what they feel about them. Uh, certainly hasn't been decided yet. Um, I don't want to mention all the donut things because uh, as a retired police officer, people look at me funny. Uh, but I enjoyed it. <clears throat> um, uh, Thursday the 21st I had a TDS uh, board meeting and then a, a NACO a Department of Justice Equity and Grant Making Zoom. Uh, I, ha I had a uh, on the 22nd uh, during the safety meeting I had a uh, a rural action caucus monthly meeting which is the reason I couldn't make the safety meeting but I did try to stop down afterwards and talk to the folks um, let's see on Wednesday the 27th I had a NACO transportation committee meeting um, again donuts at public works on the 28th and uh, I believe that is the end of my report. Okay, thanks, fans. I don't have just a few to add to, like I said, the Rapid End Dam open house on the 19th of April. And of course, yeah, we'd like to visit the Justice Center, visit various uh, for recognition of County Month uh, recognition. And then uh, on, uh, uh, had on the 20th of April, uh, a special meeting on fundraising for apartments for affordable housing uh, on April 22nd. Yes, we had the uh, uh, annual safety at Public Works, and that's always good. Uh, catch a lot of the guys that, <coughs> that are all doing all the hard work. Um, then I had the first time with the Airports Commission on Tuesday, the 26th. And uh, up early in the morning, because then we did meet, yeah, before that, we did have our uh, recognition with the county employees at the Justice Center there, so it gets really early. <laughs> 4.45, yeah. 4.45. I thought, I thought the, uh, the airport commission alone was, was early enough. I thought it was back on duty again. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Then we had the, uh, I just had on, uh, on online with the, the uh, state auditors for their audit annual Lord County audit meeting, and then I just had after that uh, actual full. Um, yeah, we had the public works, but then I had the partners for affordable housing board of directors on the 28th, and that uh, moving along. Um, then just the uh, All Seasons Arena meeting on Friday the 28th, we did have the city manager of uh, Mankato came with a proposal where, yeah, we're looking at a little bit of uh, up upkeep and a little bit of bond area. You know, coming up with the dollars to uh, upgrade several of the uh, ice rinks there, a discussion on that all the members so that's be ongoing anyway um, that concludes my report and um, if there's anything good for the order otherwise the motion to adjourn is in order recess, or recess I mean recess. to motion to recess recess to pow 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 I ever say lunch. that or to lunch yeah to lunch <laughs> I thought I'd get someone that would know actually how to say that okay I'll second it. It's been seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Meeting adjourned. All right. Recessed.
Thank you.